Good evening and welcome to the Palace of Auburn Hills. The first pick in the 1993 NBA draft, the Orlando Magic select Chris Webber. Number one, thank you, I won my bet. It's awesome, it's great. We're gonna have an awesome year this year. With the third pick in the 1993 NBA draft, the Golden State Warriors select Anthony Hardaway from Memphis State University. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to report a trade. Orlando. has traded the draft rights to Chris Webber to Golden State. The Magic's O'Neal had a great deal to do with Hardaway's acquisition by the team. The two had played together in the Olympic Festival in 1990 and later worked together on the basketball-themed film Blue Chips, where O'Neal developed a great deal of respect for Hardaway's game. The O'Neal-Hardaway pairing was indeed magical. O'Neal, the flamboyant center, was the major attention getter and scorer, but the less flashy, 6 foot 7 inch point guard Hardaway did an excellent job of feeding him the ball and was a serious scoring threat himself. By the end of his second season, sports writers were confidently declaring Hardaway one of the greatest basketball players of our time. Hardaway's fame was increased by a series of advertisements run by Nike that featured Hardaway and a loud mouthed puppet, voiced by comedian Chris Rock, called Lil Penny. Lil Penny was supposedly Hardaway's little brother, little being the operative word, since Lil Penny only stood three feet tall. Lil Penny, who was also a basketball player, lived the sort of stereotypical professional athlete life that Hardaway himself has usually avoided. Parties, women, especially supermodel Tyra Banks, and shameless self-promotion were always at the center of Lil Penny's persona. Lil Penny even published a book, Nehi and Live and Large, The World According to Me. Although these commercials have not run for several years, they are still remembered, particularly for the role that they played in launching Chris Rock's career. From here, the Shaq and Penny duo was ready to take the lead by storm. Hardaway's play also helped the Magic reach the playoffs for the first time in franchise history. The young Magic would fall to the Reggie Miller-led Indiana Pacers 3-0 in the first round. The Magic would bounce back from their playoff loss to the Pacers with a vengeance. Hardaway raised his game once again, averaging 20.9 points, 4.4 rebounds, 7.2 assists, and 1.7 steals per game. The Magic would win 57 games that year, giving them the best record in the Eastern Conference. By the time the playoffs arrived, Hardaway and the Magic wanted to show they were a better and more experienced team from last year. The Magic faced off against the Boston Celtics in the first round, and they won the series 3-1. The real test to their championship dreams would occur in the semifinals, where they'd go up against Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. When Hardaway's Magic played Jordan's Bulls in the 1995 NBA playoffs, Hardaway's team had the edge. First, the Magic held the home court advantage over the Bulls and more importantly, Jordan was still rusty coming out of retirement. This rust was put on the national stage when, at the end of Game 1, Jordan first had the ball stolen from him by Magic guard, Nick Anderson. Then, Jordan passed up a game winner and tried to find Pippen, who wasn't expecting it. The ball went out of bounds, and the game went to the Magic. This momentum would carry on for the remainder of the series as the Magic defeated the Bulls 4-2. The Orlando Magic made their first Eastern Conference Finals behind the play of Penny Hardaway and Shaquille O'Neal. There, they'd have a rematch of their first round loss of the previous year, as they'd play the Indiana Pacers. The rematch between the Magic and the Pacers wouldn't end in a sweep this year. Instead, a grueling seven-game series occurred with the Magic coming out on top. Hardaway, O'Neal, and the Orlando Magic reached their first NBA Finals, and they played the Hakeem Olajuwon-led and defending champion Houston Rockets. 
The Magic were the favorites to win the title as they had home court advantage and the Rockets stumbled during the season, finishing with a 47-35 record. The Rockets wouldn't stumble in the finals. They'd go on to defeat the Magic and in a sweep, making it the second straight year Hardaway's Magic were swept out of the playoffs. Even though the Magic lost in the NBA Finals, Hardaway played great. He averaged 25.5 points, 4.8 rebounds, and 8.0 assists during the four games. Hardaway's popularity continued to grow and with fun commercials that featured, Little Penny, Hardaway seemed ready to challenge Jordan at being the face of the league. The Magic would bounce back strongly in the 1995-96 NBA season, finishing with a franchise-best 60-22 record, which was the third-best record in the league. In the playoffs, the Magic would meet Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals, but this year, things would be different. Michael Jordan wasn't a rusty version of himself in the 1995-96 season. The Bulls also set the record for most wins, at the time, with 72, and they were the clear favorites to win. This year, there was nothing Hardaway or O'Neal could do to stop the Bulls. For the third straight year, the Magic would be swept out of the playoffs. This angered Magic fans and players alike. That offseason, O'Neal would leave the Magic to join the Los Angeles Lakers to form a new, unstoppable duo with Kobe Bryant. This change looked to put the ball more in Hardaway's hands, giving him a chance to take his game to another level. Once the 1996-97 NBA season started, Hardaway intended to show the world he could win without O'Neal, but the first real injury of his career would occur. This would set up an unfortunate domino effect. Hardaway dealt with numerous injuries, costing him to miss 23 games. The Magic finished with a 45-37 record, and they would lose 2-3 in the first round against the Miami Heat. The 1997-98 season would be the worst for Hardaway. He injured his left knee, which required arthroscopic knee surgery. Hardaway rushed to make it back for the 1998 NBA All-Star Game, where he was voted in as a starter, but he received criticism for this. Hardaway played in only 19 games that year as the Magic missed the playoffs. The next season was the 50-game lockout season, and Hardaway played in all 50 games, but you could see he wasn't the same. The Magic finished with a 33-17 record, tied for the best record in the East, but they would lose in the first round 3-1 against the Philadelphia 76ers. After the season, Hardaway's career in Orlando would come to an end when he ended up in Phoenix from a sign-in trade with Orlando. The injury bug came back to bite Hardaway as he played in 60 games. The Phoenix Suns would finish the season with the fifth-best record at 53-29, and Hardaway would reunite with Shaquille O'Neal as the Suns played the Lakers in the semifinals. O'Neal would get the best of his former teammate, as the Lakers beat the Suns 4-1. This season would be the last good season in Hardaway's career. Hardaway would suffer more injuries, causing him to have two microfracture surgeries on his left knee, causing him to only play in four games. Hardaway would go on to play eight more seasons in the league, for the Suns, the New York Knicks, and the Miami Heat. In those eight years, Hardaway's teams only made the playoffs in two of those seasons, both times losing in the first round. Hardaway would retire from the NBA after the 2007-08 season, ending a playing career that should have been much brighter. Penny Hardaway loved the game of basketball. It saved his life, it was in his DNA. He always wanted to get back into the game in some way after retiring. He'd get his first shot in 2011 when he became the coach of his former middle school, Leicester Middle School.